just the fellas I wanted yeah. to see. Question comes to us from John in Flemington, New Jersey, and he says, what is the perfect temperature to set the thermostat at in this house? And I told him, well, that's easy. 68 for me, 72 for my wife. Oh. Done. <laughs> is it summer or winter? Uh, well, he didn't say. Is it a what? forced air system or hydronic system? Well, he didn't tell me that either. How much humidity? Come on, wait a second. He didn't tell me any of this Air stuff. Airspeed. Are you guys being difficult or what? Why can't Look, you just give me a number? We, we get this question all the time and it invites a whole much longer conversation. Most people, if you ask them, what, are you comfortable? They'll say, I don't know, let me check the thermostat. And they look at a number. Mm. But there are four factors that go into making people comfortable. One is temperature. Right. The second one is humidity, right? It's often overlooked. If you have too little humidity, it's dry in that space, it's going to be uncomfortable. If you have too much humidity, it's going to be moist. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be uncomfortable. So the balancing act is trying to figure out what the right humidity is for that space. So are you suggesting that 68 degrees doesn't feel like 68 degrees all of the time? 68 degrees in the winter when it's, the air is usually drier, like say it's 20% relative humidity, you're going to feel cold. But if that humidity, say you added a humidifier and you got it up to 30 or 40%, hmm. you that might feel comfortable at 68. If you didn't add humidity, you might have to go to 70 72. Or 72. Yep. All right. All right. So now the other thing is about? the type of heating system. In America, 90% of the heating systems are hot air. Right. And so with that, you're moving air through a duct. And if you blow that air across people, it evaporates your, the, the moisture on your skin and you can feel colder. So air velocity, you think it's really great. You know, oh, let's feel that warm air. But that air blowing across, you can make you feel less comfortable. And that means you have, might have to raise the air temperature higher. Yeah. And so, but then, and you know what happens all the time? People, the thermostat shuts off on an air system, and the thermostat says 70, but you're freezing. Yeah. It, it's called cold 70, because right. you just stopped having that air, that warm air right. go The whole system shut down. Right. 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 Yep. And there's one more factor, which is mean radiant temperature. Oh, man, you guys are making this Stop, <laughs> stop. <laughs> so, so mean radiant temperature. Our skin is 74 degrees approximately. We were 98.6 and we're healthy, but 74 at our skin. So it, to be comfortable, if I stand near a surface that is colder than me, Heat will pull from me and go this way, and I'll feel colder. Even though the room's temperature is Absolutely. exactly the same. So you know when you stand near a window in the cold in the winter, you'll start feeling colder. And, and right. it, uh, conversely, inversely, if you stand near a radiator, it's going to feel warmer. So the higher you can get the mean radiant temperature, the more surfaces in a building that are warm, like radiant floor heating hmm. or a radiator, you'll feel comfortable. And the way to understand this is freezing cold winter day, you're out there shivering, but you step out, out from the shade, and all of a sudden, the mean radiant temperature increases because that sun's energy comes down. Right. The temperature in the thermostat, if you had one, wouldn't have changed. It still would have been the same number. Same Damn. example, campfire, right? Campfire, you go right by the campfire, that same radiant temperature that, that he's talking about right. makes you feel a higher mean radiant temperature, increases right. your comfort. Right. So, so do I get away from all of this complexity if I just get myself a smarter thermostat? I mean, well, can, it, can it solve all those problems for well, me? Well, it'll help. It'll help. You know, most people don't want to spend too much. They don't want to replace all their equipment, so they start with the thermostat. Now, the thermostat has been a simple device for many years. It just says on or off. It's, it says, I'm cold, turn it on. And it brings on the furnace or the boiler to full blast. And usually that furnace or boiler has been oversized by the original installer, mm -hmm. so it races, okay? And now, many times, it's just a single zone system. So the idea was to do setback, reduce the temperature. So you can do it manually by turning it back when you right. leave. This is the standard clock thermostat. I want the temperature to sort of go down after I leave the house, stay off during the day, right. come back before dinner right. time in the winter, warm me up. And the fact is, 50% of the ones that get onto the wall never get programmed. Still come flash on. 12 midnight like the old VCRs used to do. Really? And, absolutely, absolutely. And nobody's schedule right. is always the same, right. right? So if you do the you know, Monday through Friday scheduling, right. set it back at 9, what if you're staying home that day? Heaven help you if you're home sick. You have to, oh, i got to reprogram it. So the smart thermostats changed everything. So these are the thermostats where they're connected basically to your phone, and now I can do the programming here. Right, right. Is it not just a fancy programmable thermostat, though? Well, the difference is with this thermostat, it's easy to use, right? So you actually have a fighting chance of getting it programmed correctly. These also have motion sensors. They can track motion through the house so that they're turning on the system when you're there yeah. versus when you're not there, right? So if I stay homesick, Yep. It sees me moving back and forth and says, oh, I should have been setting back, but he's home. Right. And they've advanced, <laughs> they've advanced even, you know, do the thing called geofencing. So by the GPS in your phone, it knows where you are in proximity to your house. So, so it knows if you've gone farther away, 
if I'm driving home from work, it knows I'm approaching, and then it yeah. tells the house to start warming it fires up. It up. That's right. Interesting. And where it's gone from there is now to wireless sensors. So these can be strategically located around your house, and they even have motion. So it's only going to sense the rooms that you're in to provide the comfort where you are actually in the house. So this is not a thermostat, but it talks to the it thermostat? It can communicate, yeah. Right. So this could be, in his example, this could be in the hallway. This could be your thermostat. But this sensor is in the living room yeah. where you, or the kitchen, wherever you're spending most of the time. Right. But you can't have a conversation with anybody about saving energy without looking at telling people, look, you got a system that's been in there for 50 years. It's probably 50% efficient, maybe 60% efficient. You can do a lot better than that. Change it. And what happens is the local utilities are often your partners. They want to help you with rebates. You know, the monthly payment also, oftentimes for the new equipment is, is uh, less money than you're going to save right. in terms of operating costs. All so. right. So I guess i got to get back to John and tell him. Uh, hang on. No, yeah, I, this yeah, is what I'm going to tell him. Write him an email. <laughs> John, the answer is call the truth. <laughs> Good info, guys. Thank you. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.